if you come out to the lodge at Chama, I'd say get after it because they have got the birds. It's not about the, the final part where you harvest the bird, but don't get me wrong, I do like that part too. I really can't say enough about how these turkeys are scouted and the guides are prepared for you to come out and be on birds every single day. Leaving 75, 85 degree weather in South Georgia and come out here in May and sit down by a big snow drift that hadn't melted yet and call in turkeys is just incredible. This spring turkey hunt is actually my second trip to Chama. I was able to uh, come with Wayne last year in 2018 on an elk hunt and it was, it was fantastic. The bulls were bugling and in fact, I'm almost sure it was my first afternoon I harvested a 300 plus bull right off the bat. Yeah, right there. You want me to take you? <coughs> and then I just had to kind of Cadillac and enjoy everything around here while the other guys hunted. I'm telling you, we were in so many bulls. We had so many opportunities over and over and over. The guys here do an unbelievable job scouting, getting prepared to where they want to hunt. I was just blown away. I've been working on the ranch now 22 years enjoy the heck out of it. It's been a dream job, love it. Um, we haven't started hunting turkeys up until about 15, 17 years ago. So we get here late afternoon, turkeys gobbling everywhere. We were in birds every single day. Like I said, the accommodations are second to none. Beautiful setting, snow on the mountains. It's just unbelievable to be here. I mean, really there's no, no one one particular activity that we do on the ranch that I don't like. It's all fun. Um, we do the fishing, elk hunting, deer hunting, bear hunting, turkey hunting, um, grouse hunting, all very enjoyable. That been, just like I said, it's been a dream job all my life and love, still love doing it. I took Bobby Sears out on this hunt. Heck of a nice guy from Georgia. Heck of a gunsmith. Loves to hunt turkeys. Heck of a caller. We went out the first morning to a place where I've killed a lot of birds in the past. Get our four o'clock wake up call. We head out that morning to a place that uh, Pat had been scouting some turkeys and had some turkeys roosted. Um, we got in a little blind that he had made and it worked out really good. Turkeys were gobbling on either side of us. Had birds there that morning. Had one, one Tom really close. Um, he just didn't quite commit to it. Pat kind of went against his, his own beliefs. He said, don't put out a decoy, but he decided to put out a decoy. So he sticks a fan up. We got the gobblers down here on the bottom of the canyon. They're coming up, they're gobbling. You can hear them coming the whole way. Well, lo and behold, there's a gobbler over to our left, comes in, and I mean, just in an instant, he's at 25 yards, we're getting ready. I'm coming around with a gun. He sees the decoy, he's out of here. He doesn't, just like Pat said, and Pat, he was, he was upset. He said, I knew better than do that. They just don't respond well to decoys. So anyway, we put it down, got set back up, and these birds are still coming out of the canyon. Uh, but they were just so hinned up, they must have had five or six hens with them. Uh, they would respond, they'd cut you off, goblin. Uh, Pat and I both were calling. But we just couldn't seal the deal because the hens just decided to take them a, a little further than I was comfortable with shooting with my handgun tomahawk. But we had a good time, had another bird there with us that didn't commit to it. 
So we had a good first morning hunt. Way down her path. Really? Awesome hunt. Beautiful, crisp morning. So we decided to come on back in about 12. And we had a good lunch and took us a nap. We got out about four that afternoon. Ultimate Outdoors is brought to you by Southern Company. Energy to serve your world. Jeb's Precision Choke Tubes. We stock the flock. Cogger Arms. Custom comes standard. ESE Networks. The premier platform for all your live and on-demand video needs. And UOutdoors.tv. The Ultimate Outdoors online television network. After lunch, went back out. We decided to go back actually to the same place where we had been that morning. It was a little windy. We had to had to worry about that a little bit, but we did hear some gobbles and started calling. Stuck in there. And sure enough, we got the turkeys up there. Not in gun range, but where we could see them and they would respond, they were gobbling good. Just couldn't get none of them to commit, had them gobbling. Seen a couple of them, bumped one that we should have probably set up on. Didn't exactly know where he was and got busted. So we were kind of like, that gum. Because the other guys, I think three guys, actually the first morning had harvested a bird. So that kind of left me by myself, Pat and I. And I was like, well. It's going to happen, so we just kept it up and we kept going. And kind of ended the first day. Going into the second day, we went. I went back to my spot. I call it Dorothy's, Dorothy's tank. It was uh, about the same. Um, see that squirrel? Hey, boy. This squirrel wanted to get in the interview with us. Hey, boy. He just came down the tree just seeing what we were doing. Little rascal. But anyway, getting back to our hunt, the second morning we got out there and finally got the birds getting close to us. We had a gobbler talking to us. Gobbling good in the turkeys. Just a little too far, probably about 70, 80 yards too far to shoot. Just a, out of good gun range, about 70 yards and just would not work in close enough for a good ethical shot. So he went off into the canyon, kind of disappeared and really didn't have too much action after that. By this time, my, my uh, spirit is getting a little down, but we were having a good time. But we just had a couple of more mishaps that morning and decided to come on back, did the same thing. Came back in, had lunch, went back out in the afternoon. We decided that we had been watching these turkeys across the canyon in a little meadow. We were going to try something different and go over there and set up where they had been coming out and strutting. Same area, but a different spot thinking because we'd seen the birds kind of go that way when they leave us, so we set up over there. And as every turkey hunter knows what happened, they ended up coming out in the meadow where we had been sitting, and our, we actually had a blind. We had a tom and a hen come out below us, tried to get them to come to us, but he went the opposite direction following the hen. They were probably a couple hundred yards when we called, and he'd respond, he'd strut, and he'd gobble, and he'd strut, and he'd gobble, but there was no way I could call him away from the hens. And then, uh, a little later on, had a Tom come out with about six or seven hens and tried to get them to come to us, but they were just two hens up, so they went back off in the canyon. It got late, so it kind of ended the second day hunt. So we uh, 
we just kind of sat there with dark and let them go to roost and eased out. We knew we were getting close because the next day was our final day we were going to get to hunt. And Pat said, I'm, I'm going to come up with a new idea. We're going to go to a different place. I said, well, whatever you think, because we've been in turkeys every day. And he said, well, I just want to try something different. I said, I'm with you. We've been in turkeys every day. And he said, well, I just want to try something different. I said, I'm with you. So the next morning we got up. Next morning, third morning, we went out. We kind of knew we were getting down to crunch time. If we were going to get it done, it was going to have to be this morning. Wanted to get to a spot. I talked to one of the guides and knew there were a bunch of birds around there. So we went out and got parked and got out of the truck and had Tom's gobbling everywhere. Goodness gracious, just time we opened the door, they were gobbling everywhere. I bet you, literally, we heard 20, 25 gobbles this morning. Pat had a blind that, that he had been using um, over the years, and we were going to try to get to it, but the turkeys, lo and behold, had roosted directly on top of the blind. We could not get to them. Right, and right over the spot where I wanted to set up. So I told, uh, I told Bobby, I said, you know what, let's just get on this old fence line down here where there's a little clearing. Maybe we can call one of them birds off the, off the ridge. We actually had to back off the gobbles, come around them. We went down there and set up started calling. Now they did respond and gobbled just at everything from coyotes to geese to any fly down calculi I'd make or any kind of thing this morning. It was it was just one of those spectacular mornings. But needless to say, there again that we just couldn't get them to come in. All of a sudden, all of them just shut up. Probably around seven. Um, I want you to look behind you. We've got a big chipmunk right behind us. He's wanting to play and get in the interview. <laughs> He's like, well, I'm, I'm here. What are we doing? So we get in and so we decide to uh, try to move on the turkeys. The morning went on a little bit and I finally got up and I told Bobby, I said, you know what, let's, let's move now. Just try not to get busted, but let's move back, for, back up to where I wanted to get earlier this morning. We slipped in the blind and <laughs> it's crazy. It's squirrels and chipmunks just want to be on the show this morning. So, uh, let me see, where was I? We slipped in and got in the blind. Pat set up just off to our right. We probably sat there 10 minutes. Just really got settled in, got our call set out. And Pat yelps on the box call and sure enough, right down in front of us, one answered probably a couple of hundred yards. But I really couldn't tell where he was coming from, and Bobby couldn't. Bobby said he couldn't tell either, so I got him to gobble again, and then he was a little closer. He responded again, but when he answered, a turkey up to our left decided to start gobbling. So we're like, oh no. The cameraman and I were sitting there, and we're, we're not knowing which way to look, really, to our left or to our right. It's thick in there, and you can see on the video, it's, it's not very open. I mean, 40 yards was a about as far distance as I had to shoot, which was fine with me. After probably 10 minutes of Pat just off and on calling and the gobbler in the bottom responded, the cameraman, he bumped me and the turkey was standing probably 10 yards from us to our left. Got him to come in and right on top of us and I'm watching Bobby and nothing's happening. I had my gun at ready, but I just wasn't quite that ready. I mean, bird's right there in front of Bobby, not 20 yards. Instead of him coming in and strutting, he just came in looking the whole time. <laughs> See Bobby kind of moving around stuff. And Before I could get the gun up and get everything just perfect to make a good ethical shot, he had just put a tree here and there and got too much distance on me, and he just got away. And I mean, it was like the final nail in the coffin for me. I was like, what else is going to happen on this trip? I mean, we've been so close and just still can't get it done. And that was totally my fault. Pat put him in my lap, Mike had him on camera. It was just, I just could not get the shot off uh, where I felt comfortable with it. Well, I walked up to Bobby and I said, what happened? He told me, threw his hat down. He was, I'm done. I said, no, sit down here. And we'll, we'll, there's enough birds in here. We'll get another one to come in. Ultimate Outdoors is brought to you by Southern Company. Energy to serve your world. Jeb's Precision Choke Tubes. We stock the flock. Cogger Arms. Custom comes standard. ESE Networks. The premier platform for all your live and on-demand video needs.
and yououtdoors.tv, the ultimate outdoors online television network. Let's check in with our partners at Southern Company and take a look at some of their conservation efforts as they strive to protect and preserve our great outdoors. Coastal Mississippi boasts one of the only open pine savannas once prevalent across the Gulf Coast. Wet pine savannas are a unique type of grassland ecosystem with trees widely dispersed and are home to many unique plants and animals. Here you'll find diverse grasses, unique orchids, carnivorous plants, and if you're lucky, it's where you may see one of the rarest bird subspecies in the world. We are here at the Mississippi Sandhill Crane National Wildlife Refuge on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. This was a refuge that was set aside in the 1970s to help the endangered, the critically endangered Mississippi Sandhill Crane and its unique diverse habitat, the wet pine savanna habitat. Recognized for its red forehead and crown, this spectacular bird stands three to four feet tall with a wingspan over seven feet wide. In the 1970s, there were only about 30 birds left with just a few nesting pairs, primarily due to habitat loss and fire suppression. Sandhill cranes mate for life and can live up to 20 years. Females usually lay two eggs, but one nestling typically survives to fledge. Starting in 1981, captive reared cranes were released annually on the refuge. It has been so successful that the population consists of over 90% captive reared and their wild hatch progeny. To now the crane population is about 130, including over 30 nesting pairs. So we're coming close to some targets for recovery. It's a long-term commitment both ourselves, this agency, and our many partners. And Southern Company and its subsidiary Mississippi Power have partnered with the refuge on several successful restoration projects for crane recovery. Just one comes to mind is to restore a really large savanna about 10 or 15 years ago. That savanna is looking wonderful. We've got cranes foraging in it and breeding right next to it. We've also worked with them on some pasture land conservation, crane foraging habitat conservation. In addition to restoring 500 acres of wet pine savanna, 80 acres of private grassland currently used by some of the cranes will be put under permanent conservation easement. Things are looking up for the habitat and the crane. The wet pine savanna serves up a perfect smorgasbord for a high protein diet. It also provides cover and nesting habitat supporting many other wildlife species. And the local communities benefit because the restored savanna provides valuable functions including water purification, water table recharge, flood storage, retention, and storm surge protection. Thanks, Southern Company, for your outstanding efforts in conservation. Let's get back to the action with Wayne Pearson's Ultimate Outdoors. I said, well, what are we gonna do now, Pat? He said, well, it's only eight o'clock. He said, let's just, let's just hang out here. He said, we heard a bunch of gobbles. So that's what we did. We just sat back down, started calling, and sure enough, had two birds gobble below us, coming up, coming up, getting closer, closer, and then all of a sudden, another bird gobbles from the left-hand side from where the first bird came. And then this <laughs> gobbler on the left, he just gets closer and closer, and I mean, he gets to the point where I can hear him drumming. And if I can hear him drumming, he's about 30, 35 yards, he's close but you just couldn't see him for the rise where we were sitting. So I told Michael, I said, let's just, let's just, don't move, Michael, he's gotta be close. Sit still and just see what happens. And sure enough, Pat just keeps calling and he just blows up and I could see him through the bush, but I couldn't shoot. He was probably 15 yards and he was coming down the little lane and he'd walk a couple steps and blow up, walk a couple steps and then he'd gobble. And not 15 seconds, there he was. Popped out on the ridge, stood there, went into full strut, gobbled. Now, this is done, this has got to be done. Got him out of the strut and he walked down right in front of Bobby 20 yards. And as he broke out just right from the last tree where I could shoot, he just came out of strut a little bit and he just started looking around. I don't think he was really nervous, but I needed to go ahead and shoot and that time I was ready. And I was able to harvest the bird. Quick, clean kill. Got him, made a good shot, folded him right there. <laughs> it was just the, the most awesome <gasps> turnaround of emotions I've ever had. Whew, that's the most nerve-wracking I believe I've ever been in my life. Pat. Going from the lowest low to the highest high <laughs> in hey, 20 minutes. We were all high-fiving 
and turned out it was an unbelievable bird. As a whole, that was an incredible three days of hunting. It really was. When you're on turkeys every day, and you're in turkeys every day, and the turkeys are gobbling, and it just doesn't work out, that's not a problem. The harvesting the bird is just the uh, icing on the cake. It's getting out there and just being able to call the birds and, and communicate with the birds and watch them strut and drum. That, that's turkey hunting to me. Me and Bobby, we had a great hunt. I mean, first couple of days, pretty tough. I mean, we had chances, but just didn't happen. Bobby's a heck of a turkey hunter, good caller. Like I said earlier, good gunsmith, heck, and heck of a nice guy. I'd, I'd hunt with Bobby, Bobby Sears any day, any time. So we really had fun and enjoyed the heck out of it. If you ever get a chance to come out west turkey hunting, I would highly recommend giving the guys here at Lodge at Chama a call. It's just beautiful country. Um, like I said, and the turkey hunting is unbelievable. Turkeys everywhere. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Next week on Ultimate Outdoors.